Thank you. The third talk in this session is by Tom Langborg, National Supercomputer Center at Wisconsin University on best practices in construction of a nationwide high rod grid. Jamela, I'm, sometimes I'm working in Africa also, and in Botswana, the greetings with Jamela, and then you can respond with Jamela Ra. Jamela Ra. Thank you, and uh, one thing was with, with this talk, I found, tried to teach you something. So now I have done that, so we can start with the presentations. Anyway, I will talk about uh, a national, national wide installation we have for, for scientific data. And we had one before in Dcash. In 2012, we have two petabytes, uh, roughly, and one petabyte with storage with, because it was too distributed with six different computer centers, high performance, high performance computer centers. And the problem we have is one of them at, yeah, we have annual, annual growth of 100%. That's, that's good. <laughs> but we could do better. And one other problem is that the, the distance between the centers. So we have around about 12 milliseconds RTT time and so on. And that gives us some problems with some functions and so on. So what could we do better? What we have was that we have the Dcache system. We have some core services, HTTP, SRI, and NFS 4.1, and so on. And that was the interface for the users. And the stories was distributed with these six different centers. With the, we call it two times copy. So it was a copy in another time. So the data was two copies in different towns. So we can lose one center and still running and so on. So uh, one of the problems that I will go through because we are lacking of time, but we, because we was a national storage for all the communities, so we need to divide it with climate data, humanity data, bioimage data, and so on. So we need to separate this community between each other because they have uh, different needs and so on. And <clears throat> so I said, what was the problem with the old solution? Yeah, uh, It was not user-friendly. No handling of metadata. No handling of federations, and no version handling, and so on. So that's we're thinking about IRODs. So IRODs can have it's much more user friendly. Can handle the metadata, can handle the federation, and they can handle version handling. What could be real wrong with that using IRODs? Yeah. So we started with the enterprise IRODs. And because they have the new function that we needed for the enterprise storage, they have that functions. So we started up with uh, putting e-IRODs in top of the Dcache installation. So we didn't add any storage. We just put another layer on top of that. And we look at the security, reliability, limits, enterprise capabilities, and if it was user-friendly and so on. So we started to testing this. And um, first we test security and basic functions and so on. And next phase was test with load and distance, as distance in in kilometers and so on. And the third we do test, we starting with test with the pilot users and so on. And as an experience of that, we, most of the problems we find in the second and third test. Unfortunately, many of them we find in the third test. So that was bad for us, but it was still a burn. So, 
the feelings about the FIROS project. Yeah, I said we started with EIROTS. This was like to try to catch up because there were a lot of function that didn't was implemented in the beginning and the next version implemented that and, the, and so there was some problems with memory bugs and we added to new versions. We jumped all, we trying to catch the train all the time. <laughs> so we, everything we do is waiting for the next version and so on. So that's <clears throat> giving us a little headache with that. And, uh, and when we look at the security, uh, we use something like YubiKeys, that is one-time password, like the keyboard, USB <laughs> keyboard emulator that's giving us a one-time password to increase the security for logins. There was a little problem in the beginning with the, the file irods.a that is created when you do iinit. You can move it to other computers and still run it and, and so on, but it's changed now. And we also add a little security problem with the iDrop interface and so on. So I will not go into details, on that, but I did some other things. One other things we're testing and find out that the IROT host environment settings are crucial for some things. For example, if we take, uh, we take a test with 105 megabytes and 2,900 files, it was the IROT collect, source collection, we take the put it. And if we used iFinball and then with the, the IROT host environment to the ICAT server, and that takes six and a half minutes, and we change the IROS host environment to the storage server, and it's dropped into three minutes instead, and so on. And we did the same with the iPod. So with the, with the iPod, and you have that yeah. IROS host to the iCAT service, then, and that almost take eight minutes. And when they change the IROS environment, host environment to the storage server, then it's dropped to a little over one minute. So depending on the configuration, you have different speeds and so on. And mostly you can say that the, the problem is more like files per seconds and not megabyte per seconds and so on. So you need to be careful. So just giving some that is just some example and some advice, experience and so on about the storage part. Doesn't matter if it's IROTS and so on when we start and then I will give you a little advice on the IROTS stores. So, first of all, are you building a, store, a sports car or a lorry? Yeah, you can do both. You can have luggage attached to your Porsche. Yeah, you can do that, but it doesn't work so well. It doesn't work as a lorry, it doesn't work as a sports car. So, but if you look close to many storage solutions, you see these type of solutions. So you be careful when you're starting to build the storage solutions and so on. And the, the other things we, we talk about is that because we are building the storage solution, we don't know about the data itself. So we need the communication with the communities because the communities know about the data and so on. And they, need, they also know how much they need for next year in the, old in the whole country and so on. We, don't, we just collect that information from them and so on. And also when they're adding project, and if they are allowed in new project and so on, is the community can say yes or no. Because we are just running the storage, we don't know so much about that. So we have that. So we need the help with the community and we need tools for the community so they can add storage, add users, add groups and so on. And so on. All right. Uh, <clears throat> That's what's wrong. Um, sorry. Um, what we're trying to do with about that each community applies 
uh, for a quota. Each community, that we say, the climate, uh, climate people needs one petabyte 2016. Right. So that is what we try to do. And that's coming in wrong order. But we also try to get that, I said that there are different centers that have the storage. And these centers are responsible for their pool. So in your overall management, you are not, doesn't care how many servers they are running and which service they are. Yes, they are doing the services. And you can do that with IROTs. They have their pools and that with, um, so they have the responsible for that. And <clears throat> so we given the each center that you should have 800 terabyte 2016. And we give them the pledge. This is the amount of storage you should provide. And we give them this number every year. So they know how much they should provide as a services in the IROT systems. Um, we also, because we control nodes, we try to do it in two centers. So we can have fail the central parts, the central management parts and so on. We try to do it in two different towns. So if one center failed or we are out on a trip or something, I will still have one other center that can do the services if something happens. And for now, we have just one center that are responsible for the support case and so on. Um, and we try to have some weekly admin meetings between the centers and so on. So we keep in control on what's the problem and what's happened and giving the information about the future and so on. And as I said before, use a project and user management tool. Because when you scale up in enterprise, I mean, you can't have storage system admins adding user, adding project by hand and so on. You need it automatic and you need the right people doing that. And that is not the sysadmin people because they are a responsible group for the communities. So the climate people can agree on new projects in the climate data and so on. So this is essential that you have some tools to manage these type of things. And, and we, we have that tool for our other HP cluster and so on. So we just add in a plugin for the IROTs. So they apply, they can apply for CPU or they can apply for storage. It's just in, in different resources they apply for in that web interface and so on. About the IROTs uh, things is don't spread the hardware geographically so much because we, with, uh, we have a lot of, um, say, files per second issue that uh, the light of speed is not fast enough. So don't spread too much between the geographic, the hardware. Use the IROTS host environment wise. I have not tested with, with 4.1 yet if there are any difference there, but uh, still it could be handy if you check it, see what's happened. Don't use several IROTS installation on the same hardware. Yes, you can use several uh, IROTS installation on the same hardware with just putting another port number, but you need to have the same port number on the uh, on the same, on the whole zone. So if you're changing in one, you need to change in the, all of them, even in the clients. So that is problematic. So I need, um, <clears throat> and test with load and normal users. That brings up a lot of things. Don't use tired storage, and that is because I've said that for us, Tape storage uh, and uh, 
uh, IROD's disks that we are using is not a big difference in cost. So, because we have, I would say, we have around five petabytes in disk and five petabytes in tapes, and we don't see any difference in storage cost. That means don't mess it up with tier storage if it doesn't cost a difference. And because we, we use a lot of storage. Um, um, don't use backup, I said, because it's very hard to have a backup system work with a large amount of files because the traveling around and see which file you need to backup takes a long time. We have one system that takes four days of time to do the daily backups and so on. So use, for my vir use virtual handling and two times backups, two towns backups replication in between instead and so on. Uh, increase the capacities with more servers. For us, we, we are trying to use direct attacks, disk storage, and increase the capacity with more servers. That is the cheapest way for us to purchase storage. And also when you more servers, you increase the capacity, bandwidth, and all that things and so on. Uh, and of course, have a collaboration and workshop with other IROS installations is important. And of course, and finally, at all, have a good collaboration with IROS consortium. Especially now, it's I've seen because it's it's happened a lot with the code with IROS, and it's very crucial to have the collaboration with the IROS guys and so on. Uh, I'm running out of time, but uh, some other phase, we have what we're doing, uh, we, sometimes we see that disabling users is, could be hand, handy to have, because you want to test the system without any uh, user coming in the system and so on. As some uh, storage and pool handling could be better, metadata in Inheritance could be also be great to have and so on. And we see some problems with files per second sometimes. So we will see about that, that. So that was really quick and I'm sorry about it. But if it, and any additional questions and so on? Can you say a little bit more about how you want metadata inheritance to actually work? In other words, Sorry. Looking for, are you looking for, can you say a bit more about how you want metadata inheritance to work? In other uh, words, are you looking for tags to go up or down, file system chains or across uh, copies or give a little more detail there? One, one function I think about is that in, when you create a new project, we, you need some base metadata. Who is the PI? Who is the project number? Who is that? This type of, of metadata I want to inherit. When I create that project, I want that all the files should have that metadata. You could put that metadata on the collection the files sit in, and that way ensure that that property is associated with all files Yes, it is. But uh, uh, if I understand it correctly, you have to do it afterwards. Uh, it's not being automatic. Yeah, maybe it can. Uh, I need to test it. That it could be. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, you had listed on your uh, list of recommendations. Uh, use a tool to manage users and projects. Um, I think this was a general advice. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular tool that that you you know liked more than than any other? Um, no, for us we had one in the, our computer center that uh, uh, we have in one in Sweden for that we are already using for apply for CPU and so on. So we, we just using that and add the plugins for the iRods. 